Now here, one of the biggest differences and one of the differences that have more impact on the accuracy of the movements is the kind of hairspring used. The standard and elaborate they use the Nivarox 2 hairspring while the top econometer use the Anachrome hairspring. The difference is that the better hairspring is more resistant to magnetic fields and especially more resistant to temperature variations. This is basically a key factor on the watch performance. The hairspring is basically the heart of the movement, uh, so the entire accuracy is strongly linked to the quality of the hairspring. Uh, Nivarox is not only the material which the hairspring is made, but also the name of the company that makes the, the, the hairsprings. Back in the past, the hairsprings from Nivarox, they were uh, classified in, if not mistaken, five levels. It starts from Nivarox 1, to five being the one the better quality uh, but today i don't know if they still make all of those grades i think they don't i think they only keep in in, in production the nivarox 2 which is already a excellent uh, hairspring and the best quality is the anachrome the anachrome actually is one of the best hairsprings on the market i think it's only comparable to the rolex petachrome uh, is the only hairspring that is comparable in quality and in technology involved. It's, uh, you know, the, the material, the alloy is secret. Nobody knows exactly what is the secret inside this material, but the Anachrome is the best hairspring available for these kind of watches. And then the last differences is regarding timing. If you see here, you see that the standard and elaborate, they use uh, timing that they call Super 2A, while the top chronometer use the Omega metric. I have to be very honest that I don't know exactly what this Super 2A means or what is this process of timing. Uh, I actually searched it uh after this a lot but i really didn't found anything explaining what it is but in the other hand i know exactly what is the omega metric omega metric is a method it's actually a equipment it's a very rare and expensive equipment very few were made and they are in the hands of the best hairspring and escapement manufacturers in Switzerland so only the super top brands have this equipment it is capable of sorting out the balance wheels and the hairspring in like 20 different levels uh, and putting them together to make them the most the close as possible to the theoretical frequency of the movement, in this case, 28,800 beats per hour. It sorts out the balance wheel depending on the moment of inertia of the balances, because no matter how well made they are, you still have a very small difference between one balance wheel and the other. So this equipment sorted out different moments of inertia and it also sorts out the coupling, the elastic club coupling of the hair springs. So the hair springs are ready and already cut, and some are more elastic than others. So they, the equipment sorted out and matches the best match. This plays a huge, huge role on the accuracy of the watch. This is, this, this can be done. Uh, by by a watchmaker but it's impossible to do this on this volume of production so this is a really marvelous equipment at the end what you have is different uh, adjustments that you made on the factory uh, for example for the standard level they made the adjustment in two positions which is dial up and six o'clock up this pos two positions here and they try to make the average rate around 12 seconds per day plus or less and also the maximum differences between 
the fastest position and the slowest position uh, to be within 30 seconds, which is kind of a lot, but it's it's okay for a standard movement. And also the difference, the isochronism, as I said before, the difference between the rate with full power and after 24 hours between more or less 20 seconds per day. And then they have different uh, better standards for the Elabore and also for the top and chronometer. The top and chronometer, basically they use the same uh, criteria used by COSC or other chronometer certification, which is testing in five positions, which is dial up, dial down, six o'clock up, nine o'clock up, and three o'clock up. And the average rate have to be within four seconds a day. The maximum deviation between slowest and fastest position, 15 seconds per day. And the zochronism, more or less 10 seconds a day. Um, this comes down to one thing that I always talk about, uh, and I, I, I said it in another video, that uh, sometimes some collectors or connoisseurs they put the ETA movements like if they were like a second grade, uh, you know, like a lower grade movement. And they are not only not a second grade movement, they are probably one of the most reliable and robust movements out there. And they also, in the top levels, they are capable of uh, astonishing uh, accuracy. Okay, those movements, those watches that use the top grade movements from ETA, they are really, really very accurate. It's one of the best movements around, is uh, like I used to say, is to be, to rest assured, to lay on your bed at night and sleep well because you have a great movement inside your watch. They are really very accurate and robust and uh, that's why a lot of brands still use those movements on their chronometer watches. So to sum up, the biggest difference between the levels is that uh, between the standard and elaborate you have basically the same movement and between the top and chronometer you have a certain uh, set of parts that are better and they are the mainspring is a little bit better on this top and chronometer the balance wheel and the hairspring are better as well they have a better performance and they are chosen in a way that they match better and they at the end is they are regulated in more positions and more finely and that's what makes the top and chronometer uh, to be to have a better performance than the standard and elaborate as you saw is there is not a lot of differences actually uh, you have to keep in mind that the main plate is the same the manufacturing tolerances are the same okay this is something that some some people say oh the the tolerances maybe no no the tolerances are exactly the same the the escapement wheel and the pellet fork is the same all the gear train is the same as well so uh, only changing a few key components you are able to set the performance of the of the movement on a very high level and those are basically the differences between the ETA grades. And because we are talking about this, uh, Celita have basically the same levels, okay? You have four levels for the SW200, which is the clone of the ETA 2824, and only three levels to the SW300 and 500. Uh, it's the same thing as ETA. They don't have a standard level for the SW300 and 500. They start right on the, what they call special, which is the equivalent of the Elabore from ETA. So they have the standard and special, and then they have the premium and chronometer for the highest level. The premium is the, the, the same thing as the top, for the ETA and the chronometer is the chronometer the same thing one thing that is very important is that the chronometer 
uh, one of the differences is that it's obligatory to have a serial number. This is a requirement from the COSC or other uh, chronometer certificates that the movement have to have a serial number engraved. Okay, so uh, this is one of the this is the simple but very important differences between all the others and the chronometer uh, grade. And that's it. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new from this video, some curiosity that you never heard before. That was the idea of this video. Uh, please click on subscribe. There is a lot of people that is watching the videos but didn't subscribe yet. And the subscription is a very important number for YouTube to give visibility for the channel. This is very important to me to keep uh, growing and giving you a better and more material so invite your friends as well don't forget to give me your thumbs up and stay tuned